So I've noticed that people really enjoy criticizing things, whether it's movies, games, books, or people. So many YouTube channels and blogs are entirely focused on ripping things apart. For games specifically, for example, shovelware has become a gold mine for Let's Players and content creators everywhere, usually consisting of children's games or bargain bin knockoffs. I've also noticed this mindset leak past objectively bad games to absolutely everything else. Even if I tell you that I simply like something, I'm leaving myself vulnerable. And if I really start gushing about Dark Souls, for example, and how much I love it, it's pretty easy to shut me down. You don't even have to say anything hateful or mean, just like, honestly, I think Demon Souls is better, Dark Souls was pretty boring. There's nothing objectively wrong with that opinion, but it can be a very subtle way to one-up the other person and turn the simple act of enjoying something into a power play. Sometimes it can also seem like being more critical somehow means you have better, more selective taste. I found it's really easy to find something wrong with something, but it can be hard to express what you love about it unless you're surrounded by a like-minded crowd. In fact, I think it can take way more skill to notice good things in other works and figure out how to incorporate those techniques into your own. Now, I'm not condemning criticism or saying that we need to hold hands and be kind to one another. This is mainly about how we view and evaluate the works we consume and how that affects our own creativity. I feel like everyone is a creative person in different ways, and creative people usually have a nasty editor voice in the back of their heads telling them why they're doing everything terrible and wrong. Either you're lazy or you're a tryhard, your ideas are either too weird or too boring. This voice is often simply fear. Great creative ideas can come from deep personal places, and we make things to share these parts of ourselves and our imagination. Our projects can represent more of who we are than what anyone sees in our daily lives. If it's a bit disheartening for someone to tell me I have bad taste in Souls games, it's near terrifying to know that my precious ideas are stupid or uninspired or worse boring. This is why there's not only an urge to downplay how much we enjoy things, but how invested we are in our own ideas. Sometimes I see people mentioning how long a project took, like a super detailed drawing that only took 20 minutes, or a huge hack that was only a weekend. Because it's easier to present, or pretend to present, something that you didn't invest that much time or energy into, because it's a lot easier to deflect mean or critical comments. It can be hard to admit, also, that you're proud of your work, but I think healthy, fearless pride is crucial to creativity. Now, I just want to reiterate that this is coming from my experience. I can't read the mind of the person who made the 20-minute drawing. I don't know their conscious or unconscious intentions. Perhaps someone really does prefer that obscure retro game and they aren't being a pretentious hipster. I don't know everyone's intentions, but these attitudes definitely exist in some situations. At this point, some of you might say that you just shouldn't care about what people think. But I think this avoids the problem. I think the key is not to learn to ignore feedback and have a harder shell, but to learn how to manage as many voices as possible without letting them change your core values or style. Fear causes us to run away, but it takes courage to put yourself out there, face the world, and deal with what comes at you. Of course, this doesn't come easily. I think the only people to master the art of fearlessness are children. I remember watching a four-year-old kid's piano recital, and she had no idea what was going on. She didn't care about the audience or living up to Mozart's creative genius. She just did her thing. No fear. And thinking of my own childhood, I loved a lot of these kids' games and shovelware that people make fun of. I remember this Barbie horse game where you just took care of a horse and played some mini games. Was it objectively a good game? No. But I used my imagination and played out all kinds of stories of me and my horse going on adventures, and this dumb Barbie game was like the medium through which I interacted with my imaginary horse friend. I also played Age of Empires as a kid, and I remember playing Joan of Arc in the campaign mode. I thought she was super cool, and I pretended to be her. I played out all these different war stories in my head while playing the game. 
But basically, whether the game was good or bad, I liked what I liked. I wrote lengthy emotional stories about unicorns, my friends and I would pretend to be Pokemon trainers at recess, I drew weird little comics about rabbits and cats. It didn't matter what people thought or how good or bad they were, I just did stuff I enjoyed. And when we were kids, there were always these posters saying things like, Escape into a new world. Reading is magical. But as an adult, if you say you use creative works to escape from reality, you seem like an antisocial crazy person. Especially if you enjoy video games. There's a talk by Ken Robinson I really like. You should check it out. In it, he mentions a test of divergent thinking. How many uses can you think of for a paperclip? Adults generally listed 10 or 15 things, but children could find a hundred easily and go on and on. Because what if the paperclip is the size of an airplane? What if it's indestructible? They were willing to consider ideas that adults would have written off as just silly. It shows that we can lose this creative attitude over time if we don't do anything to exercise it. I guess this is a long-winded way of saying something that C.S. Lewis said quite well. When I was 10, I read fairy tales in secret and would have been ashamed if I had been found doing so. Now that I'm 50, I read them openly. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. I think that fearlessness is a true sign of growing up and just getting better at something. And that the more you make things you want to make and the more you like things that you want to like, the quieter that fear becomes and the more places you can go. So hopefully you guys are feeling creative and fearless and more connected with your inner child. Anyway, have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.